Hello and welcome to Let's Healy Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Pisces. If Pisces is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Pisces. And we have the Magician card. And let's go ahead and see what these tea leaves have to say today. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. And I'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. All right, so we have a rabbit right in the middle of the cup. So immediately I'm like, okay, so we have a lot of creativity here. The rabbit is a symbol of, and let's get back around to it where we can see it. Um, it is a symbol of fertility, of abundance. And I like to think of this usually less as a physical thing, right? Being a, Being fertile or or um, a sense of, you know, possible pregnancy in, in the family or, or maybe with yourself, um, within your relationship or whatever. Um, I, sometimes it can be that. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I usually pick it up as kind of a creative urge an onslaught of inspiration, really in a place of courting the muse. And for me, with this magician card, that tells me, yeah, that's absolutely what's going on here. There's just a uh, potent stream of kind of those elements that need to come together to create this magical life that you are trying to live. <coughs> Excuse me. I know it sounds bad, <clears throat> but thankfully, excuse me again, we're at the end of this thing. It's starting to all go away, um, becoming less and less. So <laughs> this respiratory flu thing has been ridiculous. I'll, and <clears throat> the more that I've talked to people in my area, so many people got it. It's, and it's terrible. And I know I'm going on about myself, but, um, it is uh, graduation season, right? A lot of weddings also going on right now. And um, just terrible to be sick during a time where there's so many events happening. So anyways, let's get back to this. So I feel like, yeah, uh, a magical life, a creative life, okay? I think of Pisces as one of the great creative signs. Now, you maybe do it a little different, okay? Um, I feel like you are somebody usually who is probably pretty private about your process. You kind of go off and do your thing. Um, you know, I think of it in terms of like being a, a person that makes music, okay? You're not necessarily super into being into an ensemble or a band, but really excited to be making music by yourself, right? And I... Um, and I think of like cancer as being similar, right? These two signs kind of have the same, that same energy, both absolute magicians, the, some of the most magical people. Um, you can think of like, I think of, uh, you know, um, like a alchemist locked away in their laboratory, you know, figuring out the, the secrets of the chemicals, right? And so... Um, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, kind of, you know, in your own world and we can see there's the rabbit right in the middle, just this kind of, uh, surrounded by these different things going on, but definitely in your own space. Okay. Um, so let's take a look. What are these actually up here? So we have, it looks like a person here and where's my stick? 
it's easier to kind of do it that way. Um, it reminds me of Saturn. Um, if you've ever seen the depiction of Saturn um, eating his son, um, I don't really, I don't remember who the son is because it's not Zeus who gets away, right? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to look that up. Uh, but so there's this Saturn energy, okay? Um, the beginning, which is kind of funny because it is the beginning process in the alchemical processes. And, um, and so when we see Saturn, this is a place where you are kind of refining aspects of your life. If you think of uh, yourself, your creativity, your, your authentic being, right, as soil, and it's called the prima materia, the original soil, the ultimate soil, the um, material in which we create all things, okay? Um, we start with that, but through that, it is kind of, you know, it's polluted with these different uh, base metals, heavy metals, and um, the process of driving the lead, the lead is Saturn, out of the out of the soils okay so it is a refinement process and if you think of this as like in spiritual alchemy or emotional mental health alchemy um this is where we are not we're not um exercising things out of us right it's not like we're just completely taking some aspect of our um identity <coughs> excuse me <coughs> our process our coping mechanisms <coughs> excuse me our defense mechanisms whatever um and just abandoning them that i don't think that really works right we think we do it it becomes part of the shadow um <coughs> excuse me my goodness <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> it's all coming out <laughs> it's all getting better that's what i keep telling myself it is i feel so much better um it's just this coughing it's the end of the thing i apologize i don't have a cough button i need to figure out how we can get that set up paul has one shout out to devin serpentero um, I need to figure mine out. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Driving. So when we're talking about this within, uh, spiritual or kind of, um, you know, I don't know what to call it. Emotional alchemy, we'll say, uh, we are learning to do things differently, right? Instead of something going wrong. And this is for me. I'm using me as an example here. Um, when the smallest inconvenience happens. Okay, so it really, I can get very frustrated because I'm a Virgo. I get like into a mode. I'm on task. I want to get things done. Something happens. I get a little frustrated. Something else happens. I get a little frustrated. Somebody's distracting me. I end up getting very frustrated. And instead of going to that, you know, rage or anger, you know, and, uh, raising my voice or, or whatever. Um, I'm going to work on getting these kind of really base, uh, reactions, unrefined reactions, unhealed reactions. I'm learning to drive them out of my core being. Okay. If they are innate, if they are um, learned, if they are things that I've had to construct to protect myself, but they don't serve me anymore, um, doesn't matter, right? Uh, learning to adjust how I do this. And if I can't figure out how to, you know, stop myself from getting to a place where, yeah, I'm getting upset, I'm getting upset. But I don't want to, um, well, I don't want to abuse other people with, with my behavior, with my reactions. So maybe I go and do something else. Like I go outside 
and I do that primal screaming. I don't, I can't do it anymore because I use my voice a lot and I'm afraid I'm going to blow my voice out. Um, but if you are able, primal screaming is so helpful. You, if you don't know what it is, it's when you, you go and you scream from your, the core of your being from down in your root chakra all the way up. You just let it out. You scream, you scream, you scream, and then see how you feel. It lets out so much of that, you know, um, that energy that just gets bunched up in you. And then something let it triggers you, right? It, uh, some, something will happen and it'll bring it right up to the top. And it's up to you to figure out how are you going to, um, how are you going to let that free of yourself? And so that's when I see Saturn, that's the, what I'm reminded of. This is a, a, a lifetime's work where we are refining ourselves. The Masons have something called rough ashlar, which is a rock that is, you know, it's just messy, messy rock, right? Natural rock, um, not smooth or anything. And the process of chiseling at it to get it into a perfect square, right? Um, to be on this square, everything is per in, per to perfection. And the process is, and this is, this is the beginning of that process, um, is, yeah, to chisel away at those things that are not uh, helpful to the things that can be detrimental, to the things that can make you somebody who, um, you know, hurts other people, hurts yourself, hurts other people. I was I, emotionally, I was going to say emotionally, you know, but it could be other, you know, this is, and this is an important process of being uh, a human being, first of all, but especially somebody who is on a spiritual path. We must do this kind of work. Okay. And to, um, and to figure it out and to figure it out and it changes. And that's the thing. It's ever changing. So then we have, it looks like. I'm looking at this one as an angel right here. We have an angel. So we have a guardian angel. We have what looks like, this reminds me of Isis veiled with the head. Uh, there's a famous statue where it, there's like a garland of, or a wreath, I should say, of flowers and, um, and a veil hanging down. So this is where the high priestess um, lifts the veil, right? The, for the initial veil. And let's see, what else do we have? We have a person here with, uh, it looks like birds landing on their hand. So somebody who, um, the veil has been lifted, right? So you have eyes to see. You begin to really come into this place of, oops, you really come into this place of being able to perceive uh, those psychic emanations. Um, use your clairvoyance. You are noticing signs, symbols, um, omens, and things. You are, uh, you know, maybe receiving revelation. You are having dreams and receiving messages, having visions, receiving messages. Um, maybe you are somebody who can read people. Maybe you are somebody who does divination. Well, this is a period of time as you are doing this work where you're coming into the ability to really, uh, you know, use that power, use those abilities, um, you know, and re and refine them. It takes practice. Now you might be a super, um, you know, clairvoyant psychic person, but if you don't partake in the techniques that help you use that ability, um, you know, it, there, you don't have a relationship with them. They just kind of are. And so when you kind of have this intentional and active relationship, yeah, you're absolutely able to, um, I, I imagine do more with them. And so I feel that this is a time where, yeah, you're coming into this place where I feel like you are really, um, having some big psychic moments, things that are just coming through to you. You might not, 
that you might not even know what the heck it is, right? What is this? Why am I... Um, well, I've ta we've talked about this uh, on the readings and in the comments. I've talked to people about it. Um, you start smelling scents of people who have uh, passed, right? Who have transitioned. And all of a sudden, you're like smelling your grandpa. You can smell his tobacco. Um, you can smell the way he, he smelled when he... Um, after you got done cutting the grass or, you know, whatever. And, uh, and it lets you know, like, okay, he's here. He's like entered the area. He's here. He's actively with me right now. But you might not even realize, like, that's what you're, you know. For me, um, I have a really strong connection with, uh, with the smell of things. And, um, and so I started having, the, and it's, I think it's always been, but I started realizing when I would be um, visited in my dreams, before I would go to bed and throughout the day, usually I would start to smell certain scents and I would, and I would think, okay, now I know I'm going to have an interaction with this person or intelligence in my dream because I can smell them before they show up. And it's not just like things that I smell anyways in the home or around. It's very specific smells. There's even one I still have not figured out what the smell is, but I've been having it forever. And it's one of, it has fear in it. And I don't know what the smell is. I can't, I have not ever smelled it. I smelled things that are similar, but I've been on a search for it. And uh, I, ha I collect oils. I've been doing that for, you know, years. I like to mix my own um, perfumes and things. And um, still, I've tried so many different, different base oils and things. Not base oils, but base scents to figure out, like, what is the smell? I don't know. But I know I'm going to have bad dreams when I <laughs> when that happens. So um, we have the angel, okay? The guardian angel. And now to some, this is an aspect of the true self, right? To some, this is called the daemon. The daemon, not to be confused with demon, is a place of higher thinking. It is kind of that consciousness that protects you. It maybe isn't at the forefront of your mind, but it's that thing that says, nope, don't go down that alleyway, you know? Um, it's instinct, it's intuition, but it's also the sense of something that watches out for you, a survival instinct. And so I feel like it's very present in this time. And this makes sense because you are doing sacred work and there aren't a lot of rules. There are a lot of books, a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, gurus, mystics, practitioners, whatever, many different systems. They say they know, they have the way, they have the secret, they have the key, they have the, you know, ancient text that proves it, the, the, you know, the secret names and utterances and whatever. Uh, not a lot of it is applicable to our own work. It's good to have an understanding, but you must find your own way. And that's where we have our guardian angel who absolutely we must forge uh, a strong bond with. And, um, and I feel that you do. I feel like this is, you know, obvious to me because it is right here in the middle of this stream of work that you are doing. And so... Um, you know, that is the most blessed thing. And that's something that will always help you find great fortune in your life. Not only that protection. We have an eight. Okay, so the number eight right here. So this is kind of a weird one. This one's coming through on here, but in there's almost like a, I'm, 
Now we have a person here. It feels like an older person. Um, they have toys. And I feel like this is maybe from your childhood or when you're at least, you know, in your maybe early teens. And there's something about going to the mall. There's a mall, like I've, uh, like a mall, wanting to go to the mall, loving going to the mall. It feels like such a, um, exciting privilege to go, right? And I feel like, I don't know, like maybe you're going with your dad or grandfather, um, and I just almost imagine maybe like buying a present for somebody. But I don't know what it is. There's just this feeling of um, being so excited. And this being such a great day that you remember. I'm trying to think. Why is he showing this to me? I think it's like a connection. There's a sense of connection. Like remember this connection we had. Almost like I'm trying to show you that I was always trying to be close to you. I want you to know, like I've always wanted to be close with you. But I almost feel like maybe they didn't know how to be. Maybe it's, this is like a father figure, grandfather figure. They just didn't really know how to be. Um, but they would do these special things with you sometimes. And I feel like it's beloved to you. Also, above them, there's the uh, the um, hummingbird. So I feel like they were really hard workers, and I feel like you get that from them. Um, it's you've learned to stay busy because they were always busy. They always were doing. If they weren't working at their jobs, they had projects. They were constantly working on things. And I feel like you're the same way. You're very much that way. Okay, so we have a six up here. You can see. And it looks like we have a child. I almost imagine a child with a dog. We have a dog here. But almost like a child. It reminds me of like Peter Pan, like flying. The sense of uh, never wanting to grow up. Um... And I do, I wonder, it's, it seems like there's a great fondness of childhood. Oh. So it looks like we have a six and then holding a seven. And I wonder actually now, um, if this person passed when you were around six or seven, maybe you were turning seven. I feel like there's always been this, like, I want to go, I want to be with them. I just feel like this is maybe like, it's like one of those people in your life. You just, um, there's just such a connection. You, there's just such a belovedness to this time in your mind. Um, And I feel, you know, with the dog there, I, I almost feel like this is an actual dog. Um, but there's such a loyalty. There's such a loyalty to the memory of this person. And I feel like this is really a confirmation that they're he They're always with you, um, but actively with you quite often. I feel like this is a guiding light in your life. And... I just, I don't know. Um, and I feel like they maybe had Taurus energy. Maybe a major placement in Taurus. Um, and I'm seeing over here that. Yeah, so I'm interested if that, if that connects with anybody. I always love when they come through. The mall, though, I can just hear the mall excitement going to the mall when you're you know pretty young it seems like such a big and you know expansive place now there aren't very many malls left uh or they're there but they're empty but um you know 
we all, if you're over a certain age, you remember them all very well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. We have our Wild Offering Oracle cards. I'm just going to go ahead and flip through here. I'm going to stop where it feels right. And flip it over. It says commitment. Oh, contempt. Contentment. <laughs> My goodness, Lenore. Contentment. Um, I don't even know that word now. <laughs> I, I rarely do, honestly. I think it's the Virgo in me. I always, always changing things. All right, let's see. Contentment. You can learn to rest in what you already have and already are. Suddenly you remember, I'm right here resting in God. I'm right here resting in God. This card always reminds me, and I've brought it up in, in readings before, is like, can you just imagine living in your life, living in your life, not worried about changing anything, just okay, happy, at ease with who you are, what you look like, how much money you're making, you know, all these, all of these things. And all of the things, just absolutely cool with what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Relinquishing the need for control and all of that. I don't even know. I can't even begin to think every day. I'm, you know, I'm trying to think, what can I do better? What, do, what else do I need to work on? I, you know, and I don't know that that's, I don't, I don't know that it's the right way. It almost feels neurotic sometimes, but um, yeah, so contentment. That one's a difficult one for me. I almost kind of, when I see it, I'm like, I, it's something in me gets twisted up. Like, you know, you feel singled out a little bit. Like, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> so it is a place. It's a sore spot, a place to think about and to work on. And there we go again. I got to work on not working on things. Hoy vey. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Pisces, I want to tell you I love you. And thank you for putting up with my coughing. I know it sounds terrible, but I promise you it's doing better. Um, you know, what are you going to do? These things. So many people in my area have this respiratory thing. Um, it's awful. My daughter just finished her preschool, her last day of preschool. And, um... So many of the kids had it. Uh, her teachers had it. Um, we went to her horse riding thing, her cl horse riding class teacher, um, and she was saying that a ton of people have it. A lot of little kids, little, little kids have it. And I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just one of those gifts, I guess, from the universe. It, I got to slow down a little bit, so I am happy about that. We just moved a few, um, a few weeks ago, or I guess a month ago, or I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago, but um, you, usually I'm so busy every single day. Well, when I get sick, um, usually I can just push through it. Well, this one was pretty bad, so um, you know, I got to spend some time at home without, there was like four days. I didn't even leave the house. I was doing stuff around the house, but I didn't leave. And, um, and so it felt nice to be able to kind of nest in our little, our little abode here. And, um, and so, yeah, it was a blessing and really, really bad packaging. <laughs> so anyways, all right, Pisces, I love you. If you'd be kind enough to like the video, um, subscribe. It is free to subscribe or leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. And I thank you, and I thank you, and I thank you. Have a wonderful day.